Welcome to Science Research Weekly, Episode 10. Sticks and cones may break my bones. Get ready for super microscopes, tardigrade blood stabilization, broken stick modeling, an R version codenamed Already Tomorrow, a pine cone made of python, and a pitch style competition for an infectious disease funding. This episode covers March 17th to March 23rd. Let's get started with some research articles. Articles here, articles there, scientific articles everywhere. The first I have up is Paralyzed Computational 3D Video Microscopy of Freely Moving Organisms at Multiple Gigapixels per Second. So there's a high-speed 54-lens gigapixel microscope dubbed the Multi-Camera Array Microscope, or MCAM, which can record biological scenarios such as zebrafish swimming or organoids reacting to pharmaceuticals in unprecedented high quality video. It can also have depth given the array of cameras. Next, there is the paper Natural and Engineered Mediators of Desiccation Tolerance Stabilize Human Blood Clotting Factor 7 in a Dry State. So, a protein extracted from tardigrades, so also known as water bears or moss piglets. These are notable extremophiles, uh, some of the species, they've been to space, subject to radiation, all sorts of things. Anyways, a protein from these tardigrades have been used to stabilize human blood clotting factor eight, which is a vital pharmaceutical for human patients with things like hemophilia or other bleeding disorders. So this is important because the clotting factor is unstable and normally needs a really precise temperature range, and that's hard to do in challenging circumstances. So if you can stabilize the, these sort of pharmaceuticals, both the Clyde factor and other ones, you can really go a long way towards treating these things in challenging circumstances like low power in space, etc. All right, next paper is hyperactive nanobacteria with host dependent traits pervade omnitrophota. Omnitrophota is a candidate bacteria phylum that is considered a member, member of the microbial dark matter collection. This study explored 72 new and 349 existing genomes for this phylum to flesh out more about their form and function, so what they're actually doing in there. So most species are ultra small and probably act actually as predators or parasites in their environment, though um, host-dependent traits are certainly still prevalent. All right. Now on to a little bit of chemistry. There is the paper Electrochemical Degradation of PFOA and its Common Alternatives. Per and polyfluoroalkyl substance, so these are PFASs. They're sometimes called forever chemicals because they don't break down in the environment and they also cause health problems. So it's a problem that they're out there forever. However, researchers use an electrochemical approach to break them down I think in about 99% efficiency or effectiveness. So this is a step in making forever chemicals go away. Last paper today, I have mother to infant microbiota transmission and infant microbiota development across multiple body sites. So here researchers assessed mother to infant microbiota seeding and development across six maternal so nasopharynx, saliva, skin, breast milk, feces, and vagina, and four infant niches. And all maternal communities turned out to contribute to multiple infant communities. And just over 50% of the infant microbiome composition can be attributed to the mother. With that, let us turn to some research tools. So then, volume 106 of the Journal of Statistical Software has dropped. Issues so far are elastic neck regularization paths for all generalized linear models, net meta, an R package for network meta analysis using frequencies methods. There is MG or MLGL, an R package implementing correlated variable selection by hierarchical clustering and group lasso. D RDA, a R package for dose response data analysis using logistic functions. Record test, an R package to analyze non stationary in the extreme based on record breaking events. And finally, broken stick model for irregular longitudinal data. So I dug more into that last issue on broken stick, where, quote, 
the broken stick model approximates each subject's trajectory by a series of connected straight lines. The breakpoints specified by the user divide the time axis into consecutive intervals common to all subjects. Specification of the model requires just three variables, time, measurement, and subject. So you can check out the R package broken stick version 2.5 to implement the broken stick model. In R, R version 4.3.0, already tomorrow, is scheduled for release on April 21st. Pre-release versions are already available. It is indeed already tomorrow. Or is it today? Philosophy aside, more R packages on the way. New R cram packages make the grade, or at least pique my interest. There is crayons, color palettes from crayon boxes, base seek, basic sequence processing tool for biological data, reappraise statistical tools for assessing publication and in integrity of groups of trials, and ridge extra, ridge regression parameter estimation. Over on the analysis factor, switching from R to SPSS, the analysis factor weighs, on, weighs in on adding categorical predictor variables to generalized linear models in SPSS. Two choices. One, you can put them as fix, fixed factors and SPSS will dummy code them. Well, of course, you need to be careful with the right category as a default. Or two, the other option is to create a custom model. Speaking of variables, how about confounding variables? Well, Rick Wicklin on the do loop shows how to use partial correlation to adjust for confounding variables in SAS. Need to build pre-format customizable web apps in pure Python? Well, I stumbled across PyCone, or PineCone, a way to just do that. Check out how to use PineCone and track its progress in GitHub. The developers say that it's in the public beta stage with new releases and features coming each week. Cone it up. Finally, on our bloggers, the Stochastics blog demonstrates a suite of tools to scrape and parse search engine results using a browser extension, a Python library, and an R package. Could be a sweet, sweet. Okay, it's come to that time for some research funding. Well, first on the bat here, NIH has a limited competition, Molecular Transductors of Physical Activity, Bioinformatics Center. It's a U24 clinical trial not allowed. Applications are for a bioinformatics center to serve as part of the Molecular Transductors of Physical Activity Consortium. The overall goal of this bioinformatics center is to provide a database and associated tools for storage and integration of clinical, psychological, and metabolic data, along with different, multiple types of chemical analysis data derived through metabolomics, proteomics, genomics, transcriptives, what omics you want, or similar technologies. That whatever omics you want, that's my addition. They, they didn't actually use words like that. Anyways, moving along, NIH also has an instrumentation grant program for research limited institutions. This is an S10 clinical trial not allowed. This grant supports the purchase of state-of-the-art scientific instruments to enhance the research and educational mission of research limited institutions. Requests and instruments may support biomedical research and education in basic, translational, biomedically relevant, behavioral, or clinical fields. Sidling over to the NSF, National Science Foundation, they have a grant for the Synthesis Center for Understanding Organism, Organismal Resilience where synthesis centers are a mechanism used to bring together communities that leverage existing data to catalyze discoveries through synthesis, analysis, and integrative training. That sounds like a really bad corporate motto. Anyways, moving along here, the American Cancer Society has postdoctoral fellowships. Enough said there. The Human Frontier Science Program has cross-disciplinary fellowships. They are for applicants who have a doctoral degree for a non-biological biological discipline, so physics, chemistry, mathematics, engineering, or computer science, and who have not worked in the life sciences before but want to cross over and do life science research. Lastly, the Infectious Disease Society of American Foundation has IDEA incubator grants, which encourage innovators and early stage ventures to apply for funding 
for original inventions and ideas with the potential to improve infectious disease care. It is a pitch style competition and applications are accepted from March 1st to July 17th, 2023. So get your pitch ready to improve infectious disease. One stick, two stick, code stick, new stick. Thanks for joining me for Science Research Weekly. Science on.